Catherine Van, Von Vano, welcome to Listing with Leaders. You are the CEO of, I've got to look at my notes to get this right, 24-7 VA, which can be found at 247VA.com. And I want to spell that 2204FOUR7, the numeral seven, VA, VA, VA. So there it is, 247VA.com. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Doug. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So tell, tell give us a little bit about your backstory. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, um, I, this is, I started this company in 2014. Uh, so we've been in business almost 10 years now. Uh, we have, this is our second year in a row making the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing uh, businesses, small businesses in the United States. So, you know, really excited to where this company has come from and where it's at right now. Prior to 24-7 VA, I was um, a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, uh, raised four children. Uh, my two youngest are getting ready to go back to college. My two older ones are, you know, they're in their professional careers already. One's a lawyer, one's an engineer. So I think I've pat myself on the back. I've done pretty go. well there. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to being a stay-at-home mom, I was uh, I graduated with a PhD from Virginia Tech in uh, applied research and statistics and wound up my first job, uh, my first real job <laughs> out of school was, um, was working for Blue Cross Blue Shield Association as an epidemiologist. Wow. Uh, and yeah, so just studying their member population and the, um, uh, you know, the diseases and, and in comorbidities that they suffered from. Um, but, um, you know, that sort of catapulted into me really at the forefront of the entire industry and in creating innovative solutions for health plans to be able to effectively um, manage the costs of um, people, you know, with asthma or diabetes. And that's what really started the disease management um, revolution, the ask a nurse revolution in healthcare, where instead of always denying claims, the insurers are more about making people, improving people's health. Um, and providing programs that that did that. So, um, you know, that's sort of <laughs> my, my background. Uh, when I was with Blue Cross Blue Shield, I um, managed a very large team. Uh, so learned a lot of, about human resource management. Um, I also had a master's degree in industrial organizational psychology. So, you know, dealing, you know, working with people, understanding people, understanding, you know, what makes them tick and makes them more productive has always been, um, you know, something that I, I care deeply about. So, uh, so here I am now. <laughs> CEO and president of a virtual assistant company. Yep. yep. Tell us about tell us about how the company got started. Okay, so um, so uh, while I was a stay at home mom, my husband is a you know serial entrepreneur. Uh, and, um, you know, every time he was developing another company, he wanted to create an online presence to that company. So he was creating websites uh, and we started looking uh, for offshore solutions, uh, you know, things, you know, we just didn't have a lot of money. Um, and, um, and the cost of U.S. labor was, you know, especially for in the IT field back then. Um, was was high. So uh, we went into talent marketplaces like um, back then it was called Odesk and Elance. Um, Elance. That, those two companies evolved to they they combined and they've evolved into Upwork. Um, you know, most most of your listeners probably are aware of Upwork. They're right. Um, yeah, they're a massive company now. Uh, but yeah, we used to go on those talent marketplaces looking for web developers. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it was hard to find that. If, first of all, you, you had to sift through tons of resumes. Uh, you didn't know who these people were on the other side, somewhere else in the world, you know, not somebody that you could go visit their office or sit in front of them and speak to them. Um, so it was a little challenging, and but we saw the value uh, in that. We saw the value that it brought to us as a company in terms of, you know, just reducing our staffing costs. Um, 
uh, enabling us to really find great talent uh, that you know, we may not have had the opportunity, you know, didn't have locally, um, but also just the appreciation <laughs> that we got uh, or that we received from the workers that we hired in terms of giving them a good job. Uh, and they, they're in communities, they're rural communities where they don't have the opportunities that we have here in the United States. And um, so just that level of appreciation, but that is really what started the concept of 24 seven VA that, you know, if we can make it work, you know, for our small businesses, then why don't we take this to other small businesses and, and create a recruiting platform and a vetting platform so that they don't have to, you know, be out there doing, doing this all in the background, but we'll do it all for them. They know that they're getting somebody that's been fully vetted for their skills, uh, fully back uh, background checked, um, that they can feel secure and confident um, that, you know, they have us as an agency security layer uh, between them and their worker. Uh, they still, you know, our company is, it, we're a full service agency. Uh, so, you know, small business clients, uh, small to medium sized uh, businesses come to us with just their open jobs. Uh, and um, uh, we find the candidates, we uh, present, you know, online profiles. So it has their resume, it, you know, their voice sample, a video sample, uh, personality tests, all those sort of things. They review those uh, and um, and then if there, someone looks interested to them on paper, then we facilitate the interviews, we facilitate all the onboarding, we have a training team that will, you know, assist in terms of, um, you know, any upskill training that they need, or we have a technical team and IT help desk that helps, you know, facilitate getting everybody connected on messaging platforms or with phone, you know, voice over internet phones or you know, all so so we facilitate and help all along the way. We do all the payroll processing. Um, we have an HR unit. You know, some clients hire seasonal and and part time. Um, other clients are looking for more full, you know, permanent um, placements. Uh, and so our HR team does all of the annual performance reviews. So you know, we're just we're this, here this, to help. <laughs> this is a big operation you're running. How many employees do you have? Uh, well, we have about it, running the internal operations that help me, uh, and they pretty much do everything nowadays, um, but about 80, uh, maybe a little bit higher uh, that run the internal operations. And we have um, right around 300 uh, virtual assistants working through our com company for our clients. So, um, good and at, at any given point in time, we probably have like 500 just sitting in the waiting, hoping that they're that perfect match for, <laughs> for our clients. Got a lot of people looking looking for work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, are most of your VAs in the Philippines? That seems to be where a lot of people come from now. The Philippines is where we started. Um, and we started it, uh, for good reason. Uh, number one, English is a national language in their in their country. Mm -hmm. And so they go they grow up through the school system learning. Uh, English. So um, their English communication is really good. Uh, uh, we've we've migrated a little bit into other areas as well. Um, we're also in India. Um, more of our technical um, uh, staffing is staffed from India, um, Pakistan. Uh, we're also uh, just created recently within the past couple of years recruitment streams in some of the Latin American countries like Argentina. We're finding our clients are coming to us really wanting uh, bilingual English, Spanish speaking um, uh, assistance. So, you know, we're started recruitment streams there. We also have just some, you know, like a heart project. <laughs> Um, so we, we do uh, a lot of impact hiring projects where, uh, where we, um, you know, it's sort of what I was talking about, bringing jobs, stable jobs to world populations that don't otherwise um, have those options. So we partnered with a nonprofit in, in South Africa. Uh, where um, where we worked with them to take a cohort, I think it was about 30 or 35 young women 
um, through training and place them all with jobs. And uh, there was a tech center there that, um, you know, offered them space, you know, for, for uh, you know, small, small payment, but uh, in comparison, you know, they couldn't, but they had transportation from their homes to get to the tech center to be able to work. So, um, so we still, you know, that we do have projects like that, that we do uh, on occasion where we, we team up with nonprofits uh, in different countries. To... That's really, that's really great. So what is it that gets you really excited in the morning, gets you out of bed and gets you moving? <laughs> I, I just being with my team, um, you know, I, I get excited about how how exciting the company is and how active it is. Um, I have, uh, you know, we have people that are working, you know, pretty much around the clock. Uh, you know, our recruitment team is in, you know, when I'm sleeping very, very in the wee hours of the morning uh, and our marketing team, you know, because that's when they're most productive and you want your marketing team not working your graveyard shift. You, you really want them when they're, you know, thinking straight. Um, so, you know, it's just, there's people working all the time. And, and I think that's what really, you know, every morning I know I got to get, I get a lot, I got to get online and see what's going on. <laughs> so so it's, it's, people are working 24 seven, but, but that's because it's all around the world. People are all around the world. People are all around the world. Yeah. I am the only one located in the United States. So I, we are I really? the <laughs> only one. <laughs> We are a remote first, fully distributed company. Wow. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. So talk about diversity, um, so. cultural diversity, yes. and yeah, we're we're there. Uh, so what, what is it that that's unique about you that you bring to the table that makes this company so successful? Uh, well, I would hope my leadership. Um, I think that <laughs> uh, that that is really. Um, what propels my team every day to do the great things that they do um, is is the way that I that that I manage. You know, as I said, I sort of you know my only job in the company now. And when I started, I was I had one virtual assistant, and it was me. And I was in a little apartment in New York City, uh, and um, and this was fall of 2014. Uh, and what I did is I just chunked it out. You know, so once I knew, you know, I, I sort of figured out, okay, I did the sales, I did the recruitment, I did the customer service, I did the contracting, I did the accounting. Um, so, you know, as I grew, I just chunked pieces out, hired somebody, not necessarily for their skill, um, but hired them for the person that they were and their tenacity for work and and wanting to be successful at whatever they did. Uh, and so I'd mentor them. Um, the onboarding, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I spend many, many hours, you know, mentoring them, allowing them to make mistakes, um, you know, giving them constructive criticism, helping them. Information sharing is critical. Um, you know, you have to be able to really open up your book. You don't save any, you don't hold anything back, right? Uh, if you want someone to be successful in what they're doing, you're going to give them every tool to make them successful. And you're going to get, and, and to, some tools are information sharing, wanting them to be better than you could have been. Um, so, um, so that's, you know, sort of what I've done is I've just chunked out little pieces along the way till now, um, uh, you know, I have a, an, a, a management team that I meet with. Um, you know, we have, you know, I attend an all staff meeting every Tuesday. We have an all staff meeting. We have our management meeting. We had it this morning, um, once a week. And other than that, I think that you know my job now is is really just to keep them motivated, keep innovating, and and thinking of new ways that we can tweak the business and listening to our customers and and you know what their needs are for further staffing and and to push the payroll button once a week <laughs> right <laughs> and i'm happy i i'm telling you i'm happy to do that that's... every single week and and we are we're a weekly payroll so mm -hmm. um that's a big advantage in these in these other countries where um you know they really rely on that steady cash flow right huh yeah. 
So how so as you think about it, what's it feel like to go from having a PhD in applied science and statistics to becoming a leader of a fast growing virtual assistant company? That's a big leap. It was scary because I was very much an introvert. Um, <laughs> you know, when you think about research and stats. Um, you know, it's not somebody that you think would be a frontliner and, um, and uh, you know, wanting to do sales or wanting to grow a company or be an entrepreneur. I think that that's just, you know, it's sort of been my development slowly through the years. And I think having kids was a big part of it because having kids and I was a stay at home mom, I was involved in the schools. I was involved in the, their sports teams. You know, I was team mom. I was Girl Scout troop leader. But putting myself in those positions just, you know, sort of opened up and opened up a piece of me that sort of said, you know, yeah, I, I can talk to people. I like talking to people. <laughs> I, I, you know, I like leading. It was fun. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a big leap from where I was to where I am today, so. Fascinating. Well, of course, this show is called Listening with Leaders, and that's because I believe that listening is the foundational skill of relationships. And so how important is listening in your work? Uh, well, it's one of those secret sauces. Um, you know, clearly, uh, if, if I had to pick one thing that, you know, really makes a leader stand out, it's its their ability to listen, uh, you know? So um, it, to me, it's all about creating a bond. Uh, so when I give my attention to a team member, it's its sort of my way of saying, I, I'm here, I value your thoughts. Uh, you know, it just builds a powerful connection. Um, and, you know, it allows, you know, allows me to fully understand them. Uh, you know, so I, if I want to make a decision uh, that I feel will truly resonate with, with my team, you know, I need to get at the heart of what they think of, of, of what their needs are for any particular project, what the success factors are, what their challenges might be. And it's really that level of understanding that, that helps me align my decisions to make sure that they motivate the team, right? Um, and, you know, just on a side note, another secret sauce <laughs> besides listening, but it, it, it's, 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 it, um, it's, you know, it's, it's similar, um, but great ideas don't always come from the top, right? So uh, I surround myself with really smart people. Mm -hmm. My leadership team are top notch, smart, again, maybe not hired for the skill that I was hiring them for, but they're intelligent. And so, you know, I listen to them. I listen to what they have to say, their perspectives, and it makes me make better decisions. I mean, hands down, 100%. I'm curious, do you get out on the road and, and meet people around the world? Uh, I have not, be, you know, I, I, pre-COVID, the thought was there that I, we were going to do um, a meet and greet, you know, a meet up in the Philippines, um, because that's where the hub of, of uh, all of us, all of uh, our workers were then. Uh, but then COVID hit, right? right? And um, so they get together. So uh, they get together. We have an annual town hall uh, where anybody that can travel and, and get there and we pay for, for travel expenses, um, you know, gets together and it's a big town hall and I zoom in. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, other than that, and but you know, that's so far, it's only been in our biggest hub, which is the Philippines. And we're that the HR team is now looking at how we can do that in other areas as well. Um, India is our next, India and Pakistan uh, are our next biggest areas. And maybe you'll get on the plane and go there. Uh, yeah, someday. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big, um, you know, may, I, you know, I'm thinking maybe a boat might be more my oh, style. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, someday I will. Yeah, and and yeah. where do you, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, I'm not, I'm not leaving this company. I'm not selling. We get offers coming in every day. Really? Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. Yeah, no. Uh, 
so this one of the other reasons that I was so excited back in 2014 uh, to start this business is I remembered sitting at the kitchen table with my husband. I don't know, we had some friends over that were visiting. Um, and um, my mind was just not there. Uh, it was, you know, my mother had Alzheimer's. Um, so, and this was right around when it was getting really bad with her. And so I don't know if it was mental for me that I was just so nervous about my ability to speak or, or what I, I have no idea, but I remember sitting there, uh, wanting to say something, but you know, what wasn't able to verbalize it. So, and that was 10, that was, you know, probably back in like 2013, my mind is so sharp right now because of this company and the work that I've done. So, you know, to me, uh, I think possibly I may have progressed in a similar way as my mother did, had I had not done something like this, but do it folding laundry and cleaning house just wasn't giving my mind enough activity. Um, so this, this business is taking care of that problem. It take, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel really healthy in my mind right now. So uh, that to me, uh, it, it was a gift, actually. It was a gift from God that I'm, I'm doing well and, and uh, I have this company. So yeah. 10 years from now, Thank I you. hope, yeah, I hope Look it bigger. continues to grow. Oh. I hope, I hope we're at 600 um, virtual assistants working through that. So, you know, maybe even more, you know, I don't know. I, I hope that, um, uh, you know, we are looking into it, my fin finance manager, but I want the company to be profit sharing model. Oh, um, nice. Or the, yeah, for the people that helped build the company and, and for the people, the new ones that come in to, yeah. So whatever I can do to keep this company moving, steamrolling forward, that's that's what I'm gonna do. Good for you. You obviously love it. Yeah, I do. It, it's it's my passion. What did, it really what, is. What did you what does your husband think about all this? Uh well, he's he's just so proud of me. <laughs> he should be. He is. He's very proud. You see, I've got my ink on the background. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he's just really, really proud of, of, um, the concept because it was, you know, it was, you know, concept that developed from his companies, uh, and he just let me take it and go with it. And, um, he doesn't have anything to do with it. No, <laughs> it's all on you. when I go, when I go to conferences, uh, he comes with me and he's my sidekick and, oh, that's uh, yeah, he's a good he's a good salesman. So he know he knows the business. He just yeah, really is not not part of the day to day stuff. Well, how do you think that you think the virtual assistant business is going to continue to grow? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, with COVID, the the acceptance of remote work number one is huge, huge. now, um, and the tools, the productivity tools that have come out you know, because of COVID are exceptional. Uh, and, you know, the, you know, the issues with, you know, just trying to, to number one, for small businesses to afford talent is, 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 is tough. Um, and, and then just to be able to hire the most skilled person, whether that person is located, you know, next door or whether they're in some other country. Um, I think people are, are, that's beginning to resonate that I want the best person for the job. Um, and if that job can be done remotely, um, then I'm going to look outside my, my borders. Well, I'll tell you, um, I just, I didn't know about you, but actually, I I have a VA now, a Filipina, through okay. a company through another, probably a competitor of yours, who who I interviewed quite a while ago, and I ended up getting a, a VA. I cannot believe the difference it makes. It makes a difference. Um, it makes a difference. Uh, you know, it takes time to build that trust. Uh, a, lot of, with, a lot of training, but a lot of training. That's okay. Um, <laughs> It, yeah, I'm I'm just astounded at how much time I free time I have now. Yeah. That yeah, I was able to offload stuff. And what's really nice is that since she's in the Philippines, obviously way, way ahead of us, she can get onto all my accounts like LinkedIn and all these places. Log in log in as me and and there's no conflict. Yeah, no, none of I know. Yeah, Amazing. it's great. 
It's amazing. Yeah. It's a, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, just keep as you, as your business grows, you just keep carving out pieces. Uh, and I don't know how I'm a solo practitioner. I don't know how big, I don't have aspirations for growing a big business, Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but I have, but I do have aspirations for, for the work that I'm a lawyer turned peacemaker. Yes. So I, read, I read your bio. Yeah. yeah very impressive. Very, very interesting work that I do. And I teach, I teach people how to stop fights and arguments in their lives. Yeah. That's kind of my thing. So yeah. if I can spread the word on that in whatever remaining productive years I have, then I will be very happy about that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, yeah, I, I read your bio, your lawyer went back to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty, pretty awesome. I'm even thinking about going back and getting my EDD. Uh, really? Yeah. I used to teach EDD students. Is that right? Yeah, stats so that they could get through right. <laughs> and, and help them with their dissertations. Getting, getting through that. Yeah, I'm thinking there's a program that's being designed down in Southern California. I live in Central California, but there's a program down in Southern California that's being designed around conflict resolution in education. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is getting into schools and teaching schools these de-escalation skills because they desperately need it. And yeah, no, I absolutely. thinking about it. Yeah. Anyways, I got one more question for you and then I'll let you go. Um, what is one thing about you, Catherine, that we wouldn't even have a clue about unless you revealed it to us? Uh, one thing about me that you wouldn't have a clue. Um, well, uh, <laughs> I can't say I'm a good cook, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've tried. I've learned a lot through COVID um, that if you didn't know me, um, that you couldn't tell. I mean, I'm just such an open book. Um, something that's just unique and different about you that we wouldn't know unless you revealed it to us. Maybe uh, something in your childhood. Or... I, 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 I love nature. I love flowers. <laughs> is, that, is that too typical? Yeah. Uh, like um and you're a you're a you were a stats nerd yeah I was a stats nerd yeah I was a stats nerd um yeah turned into you know just um yeah just a, a people person it's kind of a great transformation you've done it <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for your time today Catherine really appreciate it oh I appreciate you Doug thank you very much and and good luck with the good work that you're doing you, thank you. Yeah. Much.